Hi, and welcome to White Sands Today. I'm Specialist John Hansen. Government and industry came together as a three-ton rocket left the Navy's Launch Complex 36 here on White Sands in a picture-perfect launch. The 52-foot-tall Starfire 1 rocket put on quite a show as it lifted nine material and biological experiments into space. But overall, we're, we're very happy with it, and uh, until we get the payload back in, of course, and uh, let the experimenters uh, do their thing, we aren't going to know how successful it really was. So our part of it is to provide the wheels or the transportation, if you will, and we did that, and that worked very well, and uh, we, we just hoped that all of the experiments came out equally well. And Well, we're really excited about it. We, uh, as far as we know, everything went absolutely perfectly, and uh, I'm sure these very eager side is behind us are most anxious to see what they've got in, the, in, in terms of return, but uh, from what we can tell, everything worked absolutely beautifully. We saw no problems at all. I think we had a record recovery, and uh, I really want to thank. There's an awful lot of hard work that went into this thing. A number of people were involved. Uh, our friends from EER gave us a really good rocket, a good ride, and uh, the McDonald people did a superb job of uh, integrating it for us. Uh, the range people, especially the Navy test uh, people, couldn't have been more cooperative. They really, really did a nice job for us. The launch was sponsored by the University of Alabama Huntsville's Consortium for Materials Development in Space. It was the fourth commercial rocket to blast off from the missile range. Well, ground was broken on the north end of White Sands for another wonder of technology. The Large Blast Thermal Simulator will copy some of the effects of a nuclear blast on military equipment. Dignitaries at the ceremony included New Mexico Senators Pete Domenici and Jeff Bingaman, as well as Texas Representative Ron Coleman. Now, groundbreaking for new military facilities is a rarity in these days of congressional cutbacks, but Senator Domenici told the group on hand that projects like the LBTS are still necessary. I'm hopeful that it just won't be lip service that Congress will truly believe and follow the admonition of almost every defense leader and every defense historian that we certainly should not reduce our research and development. The 200 yard long testing facility should be completed by 1994. Well, a favorite target of air defense artillery has bid farewell to the missile range. When the last remote controlled F-100 fighter was shot out of the sky at White Sands, it ended six years of target duty for the old Air Force workhorse. During its tenure, the F-100, or HUN as it's known, played victim to many various missile systems, including the Patriot and Stinger. Detachment 1 of the 475th Weapons Evaluation Group flew the HUN out of Holloman Air Force Base. They'll replace it with the F-106. Mother Nature wreaked havoc across southern New Mexico earlier this fall, and a flash flood virtually destroyed the Aguirre Springs Recreation Area near White Sands. Now, although much of the damage seemed irreparable, it was just another day in the office for some hard-working Navy Seabees. This particular unit here over the last three years uh, has been out in the field probably uh, seven months out of the year working on this type of projects, either heavy equipment, building, electrical, plumbing, uh, surveying work, steel work. So we have a variety of skills in our CB unit. Hey, this weekend, we'll open up the road uh, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of debris. We'll have it open for the park over this weekend. These naval reservists out of El Paso did clear the roads that run through Aguirre Springs. They built new drainage ditches, and with the help of some Boy Scouts, they cleaned up the area for public use. Turkey.